In this lesson, we're going to look at writing and graphing inequalities. And what that means is they're going to give us a word problem or a sentence, and we're going to need to just create a math sentence out of that. Uh, we've worked previously writing expressions and equations, and now what we're doing is very similar to equations, except for the fact that we're going to use an inequality symbol. So there's three important steps when we're writing an inequality. Um, and the first step, like in any word problem, is going to be to circle the keywords. Step two is going to be to define a variable for the value that can change, or the value that we don't know. Um, and so that's definitely something that we want to try and circle, or at least underline as we're going through the problem, is what is the thing that I don't know? And then step three is going to be to create the inequality. So you can see here, you, this is the thing that's going to change. I don't know who you is. Um, obviously it is talking to me, but anyone could be reading this problem. So you is going to end up being my variable, and you must be at least, there's my inequality word, so I need to use the at least symbol. So this might be useful to go back to our inequalities card, where we have at least, at most, fewer than, and more than. Words that match with these four phrases are going to help us to determine which symbol we're going to use. So, must be at least 16 to drive a car would imply that I can be 16, or I have to be older than 16. So my age has to be either equal to or bigger than 16. Okay, and then when we go to graph inequalities. Okay, graphing inequalities is going to show all of the possible answers for that problem. <clears throat> so, I'm going to ignore this for now, we'll go over this later, but here, this would say, since it's an open circle at 15, that 15 is not an option for my variable, and we can see here it's not less than or equal to, it's just less than. If it was filled in, it would say, hey, I could be equal to 15, um, but A just needs to be less than 15. The reason I can't just start at 14 is because 14 and a half is less than 15, 14 and 3 quarters is less than 15, 14.9999999 is less than 15. So by putting this open dot here, it says I can get as close to 15 as humanly possible without actually equaling 15. <clears throat> and then my arrow points to the number smaller than because A is going to be 14.99999. It could be 14, it could be 3, it could be negative 2. It's just any single number in that direction, as long as it's less than 15 and not actually equal to 15. Okay, so let's look at practicing writing some inequalities, and then writing and graphing inequalities. Okay, so step one is going to be circle my keywords. So let's do that. You must be, so your age again is going to be the variable, so you must be older than 13 to play basketball. And this is obviously probably talking about a particular team or something, um, not just to play basketball in general. But anyway, so my variable here is going to be however old you is. So I'm going to use A for age equals your age. Okay, and so you must be older than, meaning my age needs to be the bigger number, so I know that it's going to be a greater than sign. And now I need to decide if it's greater than or if it's greater than or equal to. And here it strictly says you must be older than, not at least 13. And so here I can look at the word more than means almost the same thing as older than. So it's definitely going to be just a greater than sign. You can't be exactly 13. You have to be older than that. So the age needs to be bigger than 13. 
Okay, and that's it for writing an inequality. Um, it doesn't ask us to graph this one, so that's all we're going to have to do. Okay, to mail a letter, it... Oh, let's use green. So my variable is going to be my letter, however heavy my, web, my letter is. It must weigh under three and a half ounces. Okay, so the weight of the letter, so maybe I'm going to use W there. Here, let me make that brighter. There we go. So I'm going to say W is weight of letter. I'm not going to use an L because L's sometimes look like a 1 unless you make it a cursive L. So W is going to be the weight of the letter. <clears throat> so the weight needs to be under 3.5. So I know 3.5 is my other number. So remember my alligator, or my inequality symbol, but the alligator is always going to eat the bigger number. And here it's saying the weight has to be under 3.5. So meaning 3.5 needs to be the bigger number. Okay, so my inequality symbol is going to go that way. And again, I'm going to take a second to decide, does this mean less than, or is it less than or equal to? And here it strictly says under 3.5 ounces. It does not say it must weigh no more than 3.5 ounces. So this implies that it cannot actually equal 3.5. Maybe if it equals 3.5 or more, I have to pay an extra fee or something. But in this case, it's strictly less than 3.5. Okay, you must be at least 18 years old to vote. So again, you or your age will be the variable. At least, it's going to be my inequality symbol, 18 years old. So I'm going to go, maybe I'll use Y for your age this time. Okay, so your age is going to be compared to 18. You must be at least 18, implying that you need to be over that in order to vote. So Y is going to be the bigger number, so my alligator is going to eat the Y. Okay, and now I need to decide is it greater than or is it greater than or equal to. So you must be at least 18 years old, meaning if I'm 18, I can vote. So that's going to be greater than or equal. So I'm going to add that line underneath. Okay, so now that we have the hang of actually creating inequalities, let's go ahead and practice graphing some inequalities. So the best tip for when you're graphing inequalities is to always rewrite the variable first. So here I have some examples where <clears throat> it's, you can see it's backwards. Oops, scrolled down too far. There we go. It's backwards from the way I've been writing it up here. I always wrote variable first and then compared it to a number. You are allowed to invert this. You just need to make sure that when, if you flip-flop the y and the 18, you also flip-flop the inequality symbol. That also needs to turn around. <clears throat> However, when we're graphing, the standard way to write um, inequalities is going to be with the variable first. Um, and unfortunately, I kind of forgot to write any of these examples backwards. However, we're going to practice rewriting them because on your homework or on any practice work, you will have them flip-flopped and it's going to help you keep everything straight and graph everything correctly um, if you rewrite them. So, <clears throat> uh, I need to rewrite this with the variable first, so it's going to be a and 12 and if I flip-flop the variable and the number, I need to also flip-flop the inequality symbol because here the alligator is eating the bigger number. The, so my variable, whatever it equals, has to be bigger, meaning alligator needs to continue eating the bigger number. So I went from 12 is less than A to A is greater than 12. It means the same thing, it's just written differently. So here I'm going to rewrite this. Instead of 14.2 is greater than P, P is less than 14.2. Okay, and I promise that's going to make things a lot easier as you're graphing. Okay, <clears throat> so the purpose of graphing is I'm going to show every possible value here. And let's take a look at my graphing card again. Okay, 
So always rewrite with the variable first. We just went over that tip. Okay. There's two types of dots I can use, and I kind of already went over this. It's going to be an open dot if it's just less than or greater than. And it's going to be a closed dot, and open or closed just means not filled in or filled in. But a closed dot for if it's less than or equal to and greater than or equal to, because it shows whether or not I'm allowed to be exactly equal to whatever number um, the dot is on. Um, and you will see most examples where they graph this actually directly on the number line. Like they will put the circle, oh, you can't see that. They will put the circle right here and then just like make a very heavy line going this way. I think it's kind of hard to see, especially when I use a pencil, me drawing on top of a line. And so I just graph up here so that way it's really obvious which direction my arrow is going and where my dot is. Okay, so... <clears throat> Here I'm graphing all possibilities for my variable. So here n needs to be greater than 9, so n could equal 10, n could equal 100, n could equal 9.1. So instead of having to put a dot on literally every single number n could equal, which I would be doing forever, I could literally put a dot, I could put a million dots in between 9 and 10 because I would have 9.1 or 9.001 or 9.000001. So again, you, you see there's an infinite number of possibilities. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say n cannot exactly equal 9. So I'm going to make it an open dot. But n could be anything bigger than that. So I'm going to go ahead and draw an arrow to all of the numbers bigger than 9. And that's all it is for graphing. Okay, so here B needs to be greater than or equal to 7. So I'm going to go ahead and put 7 in the middle. It doesn't have to go in the middle. As long as 7 is somewhere on your number line, that's fine. But typically it just looks nicer if you put whatever number it's greater than centered on your number line. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and fill in the rest. 6, 5, 7, 8, 9. Okay, B can be equal to 7, so I'm going to fill in the dot to show, hey, I could be exactly 7, or B is anything bigger, so it's going to be on the bigger side. Okay, and S is less than 4, so again, I'm going to go ahead and center it around 4. S cannot be exactly equal to 4, so I'm going to leave it an open dot so I can tell, okay, I'm not actually equal to 4, but I'm anything smaller than 4, meaning 3 or 2 or 1 or 0. So it's going to be the numbers on this side. And as long as you think that through, they are easy enough to graph. Think about why I'm putting the arrow in either direction. It's to show all of the possible values for n or b or s. Um, a trick, and the reason why it's so important to rewrite them, is as long as the variable is first, and I, I'm going to tell you this trick because it does help a lot of people, I do see people mess this up because they forget to rewrite this first. So this trick only applies if the variable is first. So as long as you have it in the format, variable, inequality, symbol, number, we look at the direction that my arrow is pointing, a greater than symbol, the arrow will actually form a greater than symbol. Here I had s is less than 4 and my arrow is a less than symbol. You can see if I cover up the line there, it matches the direction of the inequality. However, here if I were to write <clears throat> 12 is less than a, a is the bigger number, my arrow would go the way of this rewrite arrow. It would, the circle would be at 12, and it would go bigger, and you can see how when I rewrite it, it does actually point in the right direction. So the variable always has to be first for that trick to work, um, but it is just kind of a, a nice way of remembering which way you're supposed to graph.